Hi, welcome to Keto with JT. I'm JT, I'm a certified keto and intermittent fasting coach, and today we're gonna review these keto chocolate peanut butter cups from Atkins. We're gonna go through five categories. Are they really keto? the quality of the ingredients, the availability, the cost, and the taste. So let's jump right in. Before we do, let's talk about Atkins. Atkins was the first mainstream ketogenic diet. It's been around for a long time. They didn't call it keto at the time. They didn't talk about ketosis or anything like that, but Atkins is a version of a ketogenic diet. Now, and they are the first to really take that type of diet mainstream. Now, keto has been around a lot longer than that, but from a mainstream perspective, uh, Atkins is, was one of the first, okay? So the reason I bring that up is they should really know their stuff, right? So we wanna find out whether or not this is keto. I still like to check to see, even though it says keto on the box, let's, we wanna look at the ingredients. When we're looking to see or trying to determine if something is keto, we wanna start with a baseline. The baseline is, first of all, is it 50 net carbs or less? Now, I know that's very broad, and a lot of people are like, what are you talking about? That's way too high. But, but hear me out on this, okay? So first, with that baseline, we also wanna take into account, well, what is your your number because some people can get into ketosis at 50 net carbs or even a little higher than that but most people have to go a little bit lower you might need to go to 40 or 30 or even 20 or less so you kind of need to know where you are on that spectrum we also have to remember that we're talking about total net carbs for the entire day not just in one meal so whatever we're consuming in a product like this it's got to fit into our total carb count for the day so for me that means if I'm I'm looking at a goal of about four net carbs per serving, it could be a little higher than that, a little less than that, but that's kind of where kind of the target goal for me when I'm looking at net carbs per serving for something like this. So let's take a look. So first we're going to look at the total carbohydrates. And for this I see there are, let's see, 12 grams of total carbohydrates. That's actually pretty high. And that's for one serving and one serving is one cup. There are eight cups in this little box right here, okay? So now we also see there are six grams of dietary fiber, less than one gram of total sugars, that's good. And there are four grams, or and there's zero added sugars, and there are four grams of erythritol. We're gonna take the six grams of the dietary fiber, we're gonna take the four grams of erythritol, so that's 10, and we're gonna subtract that from our total carbs to get our net carb count of two. So there are two grams of net carbs in one of these little peanut butter cups. From that perspective, we can say, yay, these are keto, just like it says on the box and that's awesome. All right, so now that we know they're keto, we also wanna look at the ingredients. We wanna know not only is it keto, but is this a healthy option, right? This is this a healthy choice. So let's jump into that. Let's see, where are the ingredients? They're right here on the side here. Okay, so first we have cocoa butter, soluble corn fiber, erythritol, palm kernel oil, peanuts, unsweetened chocolate, whey protein isolate, contains less than 2% of salt, soy lecithin, butter fat, natural flavors, stevia sweetener. Okay, so that's a pretty good list. However, there are some yellow flags that I wanna point out to you and even one red flag. First, let's talk about soluble corn fiber. So there's soluble corn fiber, it is the second ingredient, so there's probably a lot of it in here. And because it doesn't say non-GMO, and because it's from corn, we know that it's going to be GMO. This is, this is gonna be GMO uh, soluble corn fiber. So if you're trying to be non-GMO, then you're gonna to wanna to avoid these. We also wanna take a look at soluble corn fiber itself. Technically, it is a fiber. It's a manufactured fiber, biologically speaking or molecularly speaking. It is a fiber and shouldn't kick you out of ketosis. But I've been hearing that some people have been reporting they've been having some stomach issues and it has actually kicked some people out of ketosis. A very small percentage of people, but it's something that you might want to be aware of. The next yellow flag is erythritol. Now this is only a yellow flag for certain people. It's not for me, erythritol is just fine for me, but for some people, maybe this is you, it can cause a lot of stomach discomfort or even minor stomach discomfort, enough to be kind of like, ah, it makes me, you know, it just it doesn't make me feel good to eat stuff with erythritol in it, okay? If that's you, you gotta know there's a lot of erythritol. There's four grams of erythritol in each one of these cups. So if erythritol is, is something that causes you issues, then you're gonna wanna avoid these. The next one is, okay, now this is the, the red flag for me, soy lecithin. Lecithin, 
they use as a preservative. It's a natural preservative they, they, they use to give this longer shelf life. It's just that soy lecithin is the lesser of the lecithins that they, that they could use. The reason I say this is that soy lecithin is very heavily processed. Soy is going to be GMO, and they use a very a chemical solvent called hexane to extract the lecithin. So for those reasons, for me, it's kind of something that I, I want to distance myself from. Now, granted, they say less than 2%, so it's a very small amount. Is it really that big of a deal? Maybe not. But I personally am trying to reduce or eliminate all heavily processed uh, GMO soy products from my diet. So for me, that's a no-go. For me, I am not going to continue to buy these in the future for that reason. So if you feel the same way, you may want to consider, there's just too many other options. You can make your own, you can buy others that, that have a different type of preservative. And the last one on our list, the last yellow flag is going to be natural flavors. You may say, well, why is that a yellow flag? Because it, a lot of people say, well, that, that's a great ingredient, isn't it? It's natural, natural flavors. That isn't necessarily the case. So it's, it's a little bit deceptive. Yes, they start with something natural, they're not required to tell you what else is in there, what comprises everything in their natural flavors. Oftentimes, first we have to understand, well, what are natural flavors used for? They're used to enhance the flavor. They are um, used to enhance the texture to make it you know, more appealing to you. And they're oftentimes natural flavors are, are uh, adjusted, altered, and changed in such a way that it, it, it has an effect on the part of your brain that is associated with addiction and excitability. I know that sounds a very, very strong statement, but if you do your research, you'll kind of find, you'll kind of come to that same conclusion. Now, having said that, do I consider natural flavors a red flag, meaning a no-go? For me, it's not. Some people it is. And if that's you, you're going, you want to be aware of this. For me, I look at the context of the, all the ingredients, but now I'm seeing a few things that are adding up for me, like the soy lecithin added to the natural flavors, added to the GMO soluble corn fiber. It starts to give me pause that maybe the, the ingredients aren't as high quality as I personally would like them to be. Are they good? Yeah, by and large, overall, they're pretty good. The primary ingredients aren't bad. The cocoa butter, the erythritol, the palm kernel oil, um, you know, peanuts, that's, that's questionable. Unsweetened chocolate, whey protein isolate. I don't know the quality of the whey protein, but you want an isolate, not a concentrate, and that's good. You know, and stevia, stevia is not bad. So there's a lot of, I don't know, there's good ingredients in here, but then there's some nuts, so there's some questionable ones. So I'll leave that up to you to decide what you want to do with these. I personally am not going to buy these in the future. So from an ingredient standpoint, I'm going to give it like a three, okay? Maybe a two and a half. And that brings us to availability. Now, these are very available. You can find them in most grocery stores, Albertsons, Walmart, Target, Fry's. You can find it online, Amazon, Atkins website, Nutrition, and Instacart. And there's a various other online buying options. From an availability standpoint, I would give this a pretty high ranking because it's very easy to get. About a four. You know, it does depend on your area, where you live, and all that kind of stuff. But for the most part, these are very available. You can get them. How about the cost? Now, I got these at Fry's for $10.49. They were normally $10.99. I think they sell now for $11.49. The cheapest I could find it, or the most affordable I could find it, was at Albertsons for $9.99 for a box like this. And the most expensive I saw was Instacart for $12.09. Now, there are eight cups in this little box right here. So what is it, a little over a dollar, maybe a dollar 30 or something like that per cup, something like that, average price. I don't know, I, I, I think this should be like six bucks or $5.99. That, that's kind of where I think this should be. So from a cost perspective, I think it's on the high side. It's a specialized sort of fat bomb keto snack, so I'll give them that. But I would like it to be cheaper, so I'm gonna give them like a two and a half or three for cost. Okay, so how about the taste? The best part of these videos, let's find out if these keto chocolate peanut butter cups from Atkins are any good. Feel this little big piece of tape off here. Okay, and we, oh, ooh, that's kind of cool. So they, they have their own little individual wrapper. I like that. And you know, it looks pretty cool. I, I like the uh, colors and the way they're wrapping it. Let's open this up and check it and taste it. All right, well, the shape is really nice. Very nice, thick, you know, peanut butter cup. Right away, I can feel it sort of slippery in my hand. It's really oily, okay? Mm. 
Mm, wow. Wow. These are good. These are really good. Mmm. Wow, these are good. I like these. Well, okay, well. It's too bad they have soy less than <laughs> It's too bad I'm not gonna buy them anymore. Yeah, they're soft. They're, um, there's a rich chocolatey flavor. You know, it's melting very quickly in my hands. That's that part I don't like. Mmm. It's very rich flavor. It's really, really good. So if you're trying to decide if you want to consider these chocolate peanut butter cups from Atkins, I hope this video has been helpful. If you're interested in learning about other options for peanut butter cups like this, check out this video right over here.